This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you. Ready? Make sure my eyebrows are there. We go. (laughs) Well, because that sometimes the eyebrows they be going crazy. You know what I mean? Tell me about it. When you get older, you'll start getting these white. They'll turn white and they stick out. I hate it. And I'll go to the mirror and I'll tell my girlfriend. I'll say, "Why did you let my eyebrows? You're the one that looks at me. Come on." I told my girlfriend the same thing. I don't have a girlfriend. So there you go. (laughs) That's not happening. Uh. Hey, everyone. You're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor. Keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting, exhilarating episode of The Public Affair. I'm so excited to have this next guest onto the show, and I think you guys are really going to appreciate it as well. Um, I've been a nervous wreck since he agreed to come onto the show, <laughs> because I'm amongst a legend. I've had oh. very notable people on this show, but this guy right here is, is a Waco legend in his own. He needs no introduction. Now, before we continue, I, I have to still, no matter what, thank Rogue Media Network, of course, and Mike Hamilton for producing this episode of The Public Affair, and of course, to all of you guys for all the love and support that you guys have continued to show me for more than four and a half years of production you guys are the greatest i love you all so much don't forget to like share and subscribe and before we continue with this great episode that i'm so excited to jump into i'm just going to give a shout out to just a few of our sponsors of this episode of the public fair normally when i do this i, I look at the corner of my eye and i can't do that with him because he's, <laughs> he's done the live reads and i don't i don't want him judging me but here we go this episode is brought to us by david santabanez what a linear real estate he is the number one sales agent in his office to this day he's going to help you buy a home or sell your property if you guys don't know what to do in the home buying process make sure you call up my boy david santabanez he's going to walk you through everything step by step and make sure that you're involved in every single situation of the process. Make sure you follow him on Facebook at David Willardineer. Call the number on the screen. Sabla Espanol también to my boy David. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my girl Anika Armstrong with Armstrong's Bayou Cafe. Listen, you guys, the best Cajun in town. I don't care what nobody says. I absolutely stand by that statement 100%. She's serving the most authentic Cajun cuisine with a wide selection of signature crab cakes, pasta, seafood, and so much more. You guys, I love every single signature pasta that she has there. Go check them out at Union Hall, Union Grove as well. Well, some of the best Cajun I've been put on to in a very long time. Anika Armstrong, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Blue Star RV Services, my boy Manny Guerrero, a mobile RV tech. He can fix all RVs, travel trailers, tractors, uh, to- um, food trucks, everything. He deals with the warranty company, so you guys don't have to deal with it at all. You just pay a small, small service fee. He'll deal with the warranty company. He's got you. Follow on Facebook. He'll come to you and make sure that your rig is up and standing tall to Blue Star RV Services. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, a huge thank you to Jesse and Tanya Sotomayor with Lucas Pizzeria. That's right, you guys. Be on the lookout for their grand opening. They're a family-friendly restaurant in Belmead offering delicious pizza, burgers, Philly cheesesteaks, and so much more, you guys. I am so excited for Lucas Pizzeria to open up more information's on the way. I don't have too much just yet, but I, nonetheless, I want to thank Jesse and Tanya Sotomayor. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair and to Lucas Pizzeria coming soon. Before we continue, of course, I have to give a huge shout out to Jeff Davis, the Texas car plug at University Mazda Kia. Hit up for the best deal on a brand new or pre-owned car. Listen, if you guys have no credit, if you guys have bad credit, if you guys have good credit, no, however the credit looks, just go see Jeff Davis. He's going to make sure he gets you in a ride and smiling from ear to ear with one of the best rides on the lot. Make sure you guys go hit up Jeff Davis, the tex- Texas car plug at University University Mazda Kia. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. He's going to get you the best deal. Promise. Promise, promise, promise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So like I said, I was super excited. How was it? Was that was that okay? That was great. Are you sure? Oh, my gosh. Out of, rate out of 10. 10 out of 10. What did you think? It, what's yeah. amazing is you did that without reading anything. <laughs> you just right off the top of your head. Thank you. Gosh, that's great. I, I tried. Listen, it's been a long time. You know how the live reads go. Sometimes oh. we stutter. Oh, man. Yeah, so. You're exactly right. Yeah. And, and I've got to say uh, real quick. Quick. Yes. The one you mentioned, the Cajun food at Union. Uh, uh, me, I've I mean, not tried that yet. I've got to go try. Please go today for lunch. You're going to love okay. it. You are going to absolutely love it. And then I have a slogan for the one in Bell Mead. Okay. Uh, let's see. I, I would come up with, uh, you got to make the drive to 05. Oh, okay. See, so zip code. That's 05-er. the zip code. Okay. Yeah. That, do you learn make the new? drive to 05. Yeah, it's a chest pizza burger. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes, I love their pizza so much. But as you guys can see, this guest needs no introduction. <laughs> okay. He has had a, a career spanning almost half a century long. Wow. Uh, he, has, he was at Waco 100 for over 31 years. And yeah. this year he was abruptly let go. He comes on to tell just a little bit of his story and what the <laughs> aftermath of that is. You guys, I am so honored. And, and, and just grateful, and it hasn't registered yet, but it will once the show comes out. I'm so grateful to announce Zach Owen here on The Public Affair. How you doing? Oh, man, <laughs> I, I, that is great. I feel I feel like Johnny Carson there for a little bit, you know, and the big introduction from Ed McMahon. Yeah. You know? Golly. 
I just uh, of course, you're way too young to remember Johnny no, Carson. So. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll do my homework, and I should have. But, you know, I've been a nervous wreck. And then if I, it just finally just kind of settled, you know, once you walked in. And, you know, we, we I don't know if you remember. We met a long time ago when I was on the radio. Okay, I, we met at a HOT, um, the, the Heart of Texas Fair luncheon. The luncheon, yes. Yeah. Chrissy, yes, I do and, remember Chrissy that. Chrissy introduced us. I was a lot yep. fatter back then. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was bigger, and I was still green yeah. at the time. But yeah. Chrissy, who was my longtime radio mentor I love. I love she Chrissy. She introduced us, and, and I was like, you know what? When you got let go of Waco 100, hit the community really, really hard, everybody spoke out about that. Every single body spoke out about that. I think there's more than meets the eye. That we can, that we can settle here. So, do you want the real story? I you, well, duh, <laughs> uh, not the fabricated one. Okay, I said you can go on the other, whatever you want, and do that. But okay, but, but here on this show, but you know, I you know, I just before we we get to the real story, Zach, I, I just feel like we just need to lay it all out there. I mean, again, you've had such an accomplished career in this business, and and at the drop of the hat, everything was let go. But can you yeah. just can you just talk to us about your radio beginnings? Can you just talk to us about how it all started, please? You know. A lot of times you ask people, I saw a statistic the other day that said something like 80% of Americans that work mm -hmm. hate their jobs. Okay. And, and I see that. You see people go, oh, I don't want to go to work, or I sure. don't like this job, whatever. When I was a small kid, I was probably, oh gosh, um, you know, probably fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be a radio DJ. Gotcha. And my mom would, I, I lived in Fort Worth. And uh, my mom would drive me to the west side of Fort Worth out on the uh, interstate. Yeah. And there was an independent TV station called KTVT Channel 11. Uh -huh. And they had a radio station there, and it was KFJZ AM. And there was a DJ named Mark E. Baby. <laughs> Mark E. Baby. Yeah. And uh, his real name was Mark Stevens. Mm -hmm. Went on to be part of uh, Stevens and Pruitt. He was part of Hudson and Harrigan. He went on to a big career, passed away a few years ago. But uh, sure. he was the guy that, that I wanted to be like. And okay. I would go stand there on the weekend and just watch him. And when I got out of high school, I went to a – I wanted to get into radio so bad. I didn't want to go to college for four years. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go quick. Just once exempted. So I went yeah. to a radio trade – uh, school in Dallas, mm -hmm. which um, uh, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it, it was it kind of fast forward. It once once just, I got out yeah. and you would go apply for a job somewhere, they would just laugh at you, right. you know. Okay, yeah, right, kid. Move How on. cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, it took a while. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, always say that my first job in radio was at KCLE AM in Cleburne, Texas. Oh, wow. In 1977. But. Zach, you don't look like you're more than 21. Stop <laughs> Thank <this>. you. Okay. <laughs> well, 22. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so actually, uh, a lot of people don't know this. I started in probably late 75, 76. Uh -huh. And at that time, I was 19 years old. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, I would party all night. Back then, sure. 18 was a legal age. Yeah. And so I'd party all night, party till 2 in the morning. Well, mm. my job was at a news station in the basement of uh, what was called Seminary South yeah. uh, Shopping Mall on I-35 in Fort Worth. And you'd go in the basement, and there was this talk. Well, my job was Sunday mornings. <laughs> I would go to work <laughs> at 4 a.m. No way. Hung and over. work till noon. <laughs> Not on the Sabbath day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, I never got to say a word. The oh, only okay. job I had was to run one religion after another, either a record, a mm -hmm. reel to reel tape recording, mm -hmm. and some live preachers would come in and preach uh, there. And it was everything from Catholic to Baptist to Methodist to sure. Presbyterian, whatever. Sure. And so that was my real first job. But Really, the, where I got to talk and play music was mm -hmm. 1977 in Cleburne. Uh, the Fletcher family, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Earl Fletcher, John Fletcher, uh, gave me the opportunity. I always say, uh, you know, the old saying, right place, right time. Yeah. I was working part-time, okay. and the morning guy was on vacation. The afternoon guy was filling in in mornings. I was filling in in afternoons. Yeah. Something the morning guy did made the old man, the uh, Earl Fletcher, mad, and he fired him. Jeez. And he came to me and he said, Zach, well, I think he said, son. He said, son, yeah. if you do the morning show and the afternoon show, uh -huh. 
when the original morning show guy gets back, I'll give you a full-time job. Oh, sweet. And I said, well, I live in Fort Worth, and mm-hmm. this is clear. And he says, son, you go sleep at my house. After you get off the morning show, sleep, take a nap, and then yeah. come back and do that. Oh, he wanted so to I did that yeah. for a week or two, sure. came back, got my first job in radio. There you go. And uh, that was great. Uh, you know, we played records. We right. played 45s mostly. We had some albums. Uh, the old turntables where you had to cue oh, it wow. up. I can't even imagine having to have done that because, you know, we had the programs. You know, we had the computer. Oh, <laughs> we're yeah. loading music and, and, and if you were <laughs> yeah. if you were paying attention to something else, that computer would start another song. Absolutely. Well, then you, you know, if you didn't have that next record queued up. <laughs> sure. And in those days, most country records were very, very short. Okay. You know, two, two and a half minutes. Right. And so it was, uh, it kept you on your toes. Right. And we played all our commercials on cartridges, like no. kind of like an eight track cartridge looking thing. But uh, anyway, I worked there for a couple of years. Yeah. I got offered a job to go to Brownwood, Texas. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was called KXYL yeah. AM station. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so I went out there. I did the morning show. My first morning show started at five in the morning till 10 o'clock. Now, Dang. that was tough. Yeah. Wait, did you were live from 5 to 10? When you were that's a, a single time. guy, yeah. you know, that's a early. Well, yeah. And so. then you're Zach. So you're, you're partying, <laughs> right? You, that's party. how you, uh, I got five girls at the house. Oh, okay. oh no. We only had four. <laughs> only four. But, but anyway. So yeah. I did that for about, uh, I don't know, maybe a year. Okay. I got a call from the Fletchers from, from Cleburne and said, sure. hey. We want you back. We want to bring you back. We want to make you program director. Be mm-hmm. my first program director oh, job. Okay. So I came back doing mornings. Yeah. And and program director, um, I did that. And uh, this is a little thing that most people don't know about me. Uh, for about thirty some odd years, mm-hmm. I called square dances. Oh, really? you know the guy that stood up there and says bow to your partner. Yeah. Club? Did you do that? I started when I was about fourteen years old. Oh wow. And so. Uh, in probably 1980, 81, <laughs> I quit radio okay. briefly and I called square dances for a living. I traveled all over Texas, uh, New Mexico, Louisiana, Oklahoma. Sure. I would go, uh, every year to a square dance resort mm-hmm. in, uh, in Colorado and, and call for a week. And, uh, it was very popular in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah, and early yeah. 80s. Square I was dance. Say, cause not now, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah, there's a square dance hall it's, in Waco, oh. out on uh, in Spiegelville, mm-hmm. uh, on Highway 6. We should go. It's called Alamand Hall. We're going to go. We're going to go <laughs> in celebration of this, Zach and I. You, guys you need to do us. that. No, we should. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll go by myself, Zach. That's fine. And at, <laughs> at one time. <laughs> They had four or five clubs here. Yeah. I think they're down to probably one or two now. Because sure. square dancing is just not. It's dying. Uh, like yes, radio. Like exactly. Radio like newspaper, <laughs> yeah. radio. Unfortunately. So forth. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I did that for a bit. I missed radio. Sure. At that time, I got contacted by the Fletchers again. And they said, hey, we have a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. We're going to put on an FM. Remember, I've worked only for AM, AM stations. AM, right. Mm-hmm. We've got a great opportunity. We're going to put an FM radio station on the air, brand new, mm-hmm. brand new equipment, brand new everything in Waco, Texas. Wow. And I said, count me in. I okay. Said, you want to be the first program? I said, yes. Uh, came to, uh, at the time in those years, they had a thing uh, where you could not, you had to broadcast mm-hmm. the majority of your show from the town of your license. Now, that's all gone now. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. So we originally started broadcasting in the Hillsborough area because right. it was a, an old Hillsborough uh, frequency. Yes. Eventually, we moved our studios. I believe there's a real estate agent maybe there now, but mm. uh, over by Taqueria Number 9, there was a, me- a, a, a chicken place right next to it. And then there's a pretty two-story building right on that corner uh, on Valley Mills Drive. Yeah. We were on the second floor. We took the second floor, and our studios were state-of-the-art. And, and it was unbelievable for a young guy, you know, first FM, state-of-the-art. And we put it on. It was called KJNE FM, 102.5. Uh-huh. Came in as country. At that time, the number one country was KNFO, mm-hmm. was uh, the number one country. They were a uh, continuous style where they'd play, you know, 20 in a row. We came in with personality, had yeah. a guy-girl morning show, Jane and Jay in the morning, and uh, so anyway, I was there for a few years. I got offered a job to go to 
uh, Keen, K-E-A-N, yeah. in Abilene, Texas. I went to Abilene. That's a lot I spent of moving. Nearly, <laughs> you know, they always used to, in the old days, they'd say, DJs uh, have two things, headphones and a moving trailer. Yeah. You know? Because nowadays you could just, like, record and then just send oh, it yeah. off to, to the station oh, and yeah. do everything in-house. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're in... You know, Chicago, you can do a show in Waco. Yeah, know, exactly. You can. And that's that's kind of what the downfall of my show was. But anyway, oh, uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up, Andrew. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you, is, the <laughs> sa- is it the same equipment from 31 years ago than when you got fired? Because, you know, they're not spending money on nothing. And not just, no. Not just, okay. It's not. Because <laughs> the station I worked for, the, the equipment was ancient. So. It's not the same from 1980. It's the same from 1990. So... <laughs> So I ended up, I went to, to Keene and Abilene, which was a top radio station <laughs> yeah. country. I was there for uh, almost six years. Right. Uh, I left there. They transferred me. That company transferred me to uh, Longview, Texas. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I was on a station called Kix, which was a number one country station in that area. Mm-hmm. Then they came to me and said, hey, we're going to transfer you to Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, gosh. I'd never lived yeah. outside of the state of Texas. And so I went. Uh, my specialty was country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went up there. It had been a pop station. They had changed it. Got up there. Beautiful town. Right. You know, I love to play golf. Great golf courses. Great. People were so nice. Right. The, the, the station was in bankruptcy. It was yeah. bad. It was just bad, yeah. So I started looking to get out. And a friend of mine who I'd known from Longview was now the general manager at WACO. Mm-hmm. He called me and he said, do you want to come to work? And I said, sure. I loved Waco. Yeah. Uh, originally being from Fort Worth, uh, it was a great location. So I said, sure. And uh, so I came back September of, uh, I think, 91. Uh-huh. And again, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, I, I had to clean house and start over. And uh, we had an afternoon guy named Greg Sachs, kept him. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Elliott uh, was a DJ that had been there before, brought him back full time. Hired Jim. Jim was in Tyler working right. TV and radio, brought him in. So I put together a total team. And uh, when I, if I, my memory serves me, which I'm getting old, so it's hard to remember <laughs> some things. But Not at 23. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, with a lot of alcohol. But anyway. Yeah. Um, All the partying. Those parties. You yes. know? <laughs> so um, what was I saying? Oh, anyway. Say- <laughs> yeah. See, that happens. <laughs> When I'm trying I, to keep you on track. <laughs> when I took over on Keene, I mean, right. on Waco. On Waco, yeah. I believe it was in a three-way tie for second place mm. before, right when I got there. Right. Within one year, one ratings. Back then, they only uh, uh, Arbitron only rated one time a year. Right. So within one book, we went tied from second to number one. And we were number one, I want to say... 29 no. or 30 consecutive out of 31 years. Wow. I think there's only one year that I think 97 FM beat us sure, uh, sure. for number one spot. Okay. But it, it was a great ride. And um, so here I am today. At the end of the day, yes. And thank you for coming again. But at the end of the day, just even you laying all that out just shows, you know, the background and the accomplishments that you've been able to achieve and just being just so mobile and what you had to do. You know what I mean? Coming from like oh, yeah. the grassroots of radio where you yeah. were, you know, having to move physically and stuff sure. like that, you know? Um, and so, you know, Zach and Jim is a show that we all grew up on or the most of the people here in town grew up on. And yeah. um, uh, unfortunately, Jim passed away just some years ago. In fact, because- Jim passed away. Now, this mm. airs on Monday. Jim's one year death uh, was last Friday. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Okay. How yeah. how did that um how did that affect you in that show? Oh, uh, you know when when you're with is we always joked. Sure. When Jim was alive, we always joked. Uh, he and I had been married multiple times, <laughs> and w- the joke was we were together longer than any of our marriages. Oh, wow. and it was like a marriage. We yeah, were we sure. were you know he was my employee. He right. was my partner. Mm-hmm. He was my friend. Uh, and it, yeah, it, it it was very tough, sure. uh, especially. I mean, he was fifty nine years old, right? And had so many years ahead of him. You know, had a wonderful marriage with his wife Melanie and his yeah. daughters, four daughters. And um, it's just you know taken so fast. Yeah. Uh, but you know, one thing is, uh, I'm in a way I'm glad Jim didn't have to go through. Wow. What I went through as far as being, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, tough I, mean, I, w- to I wish yeah. he was alive, sure. but I, I would be so sad, uh, 
for both of us to be let go. Right. Uh, just the way it happened. Just the way it happened. You but know, I do miss him. And yes, it was. Uh, in fact, I tell you, just a, a week ago, yeah. it was Cattle Baron's Ball and two great guys that supported Cattle Baron's Ball and the American Cancer Society, mm-hmm. Jim and another friend named Hal Whitaker. Uh, were honored. They both passed away, uh, but they were huge supporters of the, the, yeah. the organization. They honored them at Cattle Baron's Ball, and they showed a video right before I was to go on stage and uh, announce auction items. And boy, it was the first time I'd heard Jim's voice or oh, wow. seen him uh-huh. in almost a year. Sure. And it hit hard. Yeah, it hit very yeah. hard. And, and I do miss him so very much. Yeah, and you know, rest in peace to him. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And and it's such a it's such a tough thing for you to say that you know, you're happy that he didn't have to endure what went down. And, and we're just gonna jump right into it, right? Because that's the meat and potatoes of this episode. And everybody wants to know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, you 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 were let go earlier this year after over 31 years, correct? Yeah. Uh, um, being Waco 100. Everybody yeah. grew up with you. Everybody from the time that they were in diapers up until now, uh, they grew up with Zach and Jim. Yeah. One day you just get on social media and you announce that you were just let go. Yeah. Um, the social media was taken by storm, Zach. Do you hear me? Yeah. Everybody, nobody cared when I got fired from the station, right? <laughs> but when, <laughs> but when That's you, not true. No, no, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll get to that in a second too because I have a question for you. But um, you announced your departure from Waco 100. You decide that you're going to announce it. Did you announce it the same day you were let go? Or did yes. you wait a little bit? Okay. Yes. So now, I didn't go into any detail. Right. Uh, because... Uh, to get compensated for right. six months, mm-hmm. uh, you, I had to. They. It, it was funny because in the thing I signed, there was a line that said something about if you talk bad about them mm-hmm. during that time, they can ask you to give back all the money. Oh yeah, and, and but it's not that time anymore. That's right. <laughs> I had to wait a little bit too, though, because it was in my contract as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, now I can speak freely about it because it's been a few years. Anyway, what happened? Well, it was March fifteenth. Okay, it was a Friday. And uh, Jim had passed away the, the previous uh, October, so I've right. been doing this show since then. Uh, and not to take anything away from Jim, mm-hmm. but uh, that fall, that October, November, December ratings is the fall ratings. Now it's called Nielsen mm-hmm. ratings, um, had taken place. Right. So I'd done the show by myself most of the time because really Jim, uh, Jim was not on air the last day he was on the radio was August 14th. Mm-hmm. Uh, was a Friday. Sure. And and just quickly on that. Yeah. Uh, August 14th was Friday. He did the show. And I could tell he was not well. He, right. he was fading. And the next night was Cattle Barons. I believe it was August 15th. Cattle right. Barons Ball. And, and he showed up. Okay. Within a 24-hour period from Friday to Saturday, Jim walked up. And he didn't look the mm, same. Right. I knew something was wrong. Was wrong. Yeah. Bad wrong. Right. Anyway, uh, so Jim Jim was not on the show since August. But anyway, did the show by myself. Came back, great ratings. Number one right. in Waco. Number one in Colleen Temple, which is a different ratings area. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, which they've got great radio stations down there. Mm-hmm. So we always said. Uh, all, I always said, hey, to be number one down there is so exciting because. We really don't have a big presence yeah, down there. most definitely. And to beat a, a great station like uh, US 105, which is a, a town square station, and the other ones, it made me feel really good. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, things had started happening. They uh, uh, came in about a year before, and they had let the uh, general manager who had been there a long time mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. They had come in a, a few months later, and they had let the sales manager who had been there a while go. Oh, wow. And during COVID, they took away all of the uh, HR, bookkeeping, uh-huh. uh, receptionist, uh, all that disappeared. Right. Uh, so there's not a lot of people uh, were in the building. Yeah. And um, anyway, it was kind of like, well, God, this is weird. We have, uh, we have no manager. You know, we have yeah. a manager, but he's out of state or he's a different town or, right, right. you know, whatever. And it's, it's just hit me like things. Things are taking a turn. Yeah. Just in the business. And I had, um, th- back up a little bit, there's, mm-hmm. there's three things that the company always asks from every on-air personality. Yeah. One, good ratings. Mm-hmm. Don't have to be number one, but just 
give us some good ratings. Yeah. Number two, endorsements. Oh, what yeah. What you did leading into the show, your commercials, those were so important. Yeah. For uh, any show, uh, they're usually more expensive right. uh, than the other ones because you get a little bit more attention, so forth and so on. And number three, just general revenue, mm-hmm. just revenue for the station, the morning show, whatever. That, they told me for years, 20 some odd years, mm-hmm. you hit those, you're in like you're Flynn, man. You're, yeah. you're here forever. Right. So that was very disappointing because uh, I like the company. I like the people up up the ladder that I worked for. Yeah. Well, they brought in a, a, a new sales. Uh, well, he was new. He was from another station. So he took uh-huh. over the market, added this market. And, you know, I could tell from the start, he, he really didn't like me. And, sure. and uh, <laughs> you know, when you are in, when you have molded the number one radio station for 30 years right. and had the top morning show and in, in your popularity and so forth. Mm-hmm. And I was also what was called the senior vice president of programming, which meant I was over all eight radio stations Jeez. in Waco and Temple right. and clean. And when, you know, when you have that responsibility, when you, you know, you, you um, feel like, Hey, I, I've done this. I, I'm, I'm responsible. You know, I have a great team. Right. Uh, they work hard. You know, uh, you don't need nobody coming in trying to tell you how to do things. Exactly. Yeah. Speak freely, Zach. It's okay. We're out of contract. And <laughs> and uh, you, I could tell he was there sure. watching and setting up and going to make the move. Okay. So uh, it was Friday the, the, the 15th of March. Mm-hmm. I said it was 10 o'clock. I said, hey, have a great weekend. Mm-hmm. I'll see you back Monday morning. Okay. As I turned the microphone off. This was live. Uh-huh. The door opened to the studio. You're kidding. Oh, and the guy that was considered the area vice president of programming, uh-huh. he was from Beaumont. He walks in. As soon as I saw him, right. I knew. Really? Because uh, I had had, unfortunately, I had had to let be in on meetings, letting people go. Right, right. You know, John Elliott, Jennifer Allen mm. was very important. The, the list goes on and on. Yes. Chrissy was one of those many years right. ago. She was on 97 FM forever. Yeah, she was. That was one that I, I told you before we started the show, that one really hurt because she's right. a wonderful person. Jennifer was a great person, Jen- mm. uh, John Elliott. Anyway, I knew it was going to happen. So I walked down the hall to my office. The guy, the sales manager who was uh, uh, there was waiting. Yeah. And in corporate world, they have a, a big script, and they read this script. <laughs> and, you know, after being there 31 years, your office, I had a, a good size office, and I had a lot of cool stuff and, mm. you know, pictures and, and personal items. Well, in the corporate world, uh, you they read the script, and they say, we need your phone, your keys, your car to get in the building, mm-hmm. uh, uh, your computer, your laptop, if you have one that's company, anything company, you give immediately. Right. Then they immediately walk you out the door. You're not allowed to touch anything. Oh, gosh. You can't take your coffee mug, your whatever. Nothing, yeah. Uh, I think I did take my uh, coffee mug. But they anyway. Let me, they let me give hugs. <laughs> I was going to no, give Chrissy a hug. You yes. could not go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, so I was by the back door. So I was really close to the back door. Right. And uh, so they walked me out and I got in my car. And and I'm not saying this to make it look good, but that night or the next morning, I looked at my uh, uh, fiance uh-huh. and I said, I feel like the world has been lifted off my shoulders. Mm, Got gotcha. you. I was at ease. Almost like I relieved. Relieved. But, but Zach, everybody was mad. Everybody was so mad. Everybody was like boycotting Waco 100 and yes. everybody was up in arms. How can we get rid of Zach? He's such a legend. What, what are you guys thinking? Um, God, I want to I want to get more into it. Do you think that there was more than meets the eye to the community? Do you think that people, people may have been like, there may have been wool pulled over their eyes well, in terms of what's really going on behind the scenes? In, in, in our company, mm-hmm. um, the Bobby Bones show actually started in Austin uh, on the pop station. Yeah. He was pop. Yeah, he was. Uh, at that time, they were looking for, I believe, I, I, I'm, I 
not 100% sure, but at the time, I believe Big D and Bubba, who are a morning show group out of Nashville now, uh, they were part of our company, and they were leaving. They needed a national country uh, person. Okay. A show. And they they offered Bobby Bones to move over to country, yeah. take his team, move to Nashville, and get on our country station there. And then they were going to start what we call uh, – uh, one of the words is voice tracking, uh, mm. recording, or oh, yeah. sending it out. Uh, some of them, they send it out live by satellite. Now they don't even need a satellite. It's all done incredible ways. Like you send I, the MP3 and then uh, they load it. Just, yeah, uh, just I know what you're crazy. talking about. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. so uh, uh, that was very – over the years since they did that, I've seen so many morning shows go. Just good acts, yeah. And, and it was happening and one by one. I believe – and people even told me, well, the reason you haven't been let go, you and Jim, is because of those three things I talked about, mm-hmm. ratings and revenue and endorsements. Sure. And uh, even though it was uh, huge there when they let me go, I think it came down to, okay, Jim's gone. Um, you're the only live person left on this mm-hmm. station. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can save money. Uh, I made a... a I mean, I'm not trying to sound uh, uh, no, arrogant or big. Sure. I made a, a unstupid amount of money. Right. Stupid amount. Right. I mean, if I told you, you would go get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Sponsor the show. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsor the show. No I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> you know, not, not only yeah. did I have a great salary. Right. But I felt like I, I, I will tell you, I never in the 31 years, never asked for a raise. They okay. gave it they to They gave it to me. you. Well, so what I made, I believe I'd been making for the last 10 years. But you earned it, didn't you? I mean, but I feel like I earned it. You, you, you have a lot, a lot under your belt. You were making a lot of endorsements. Yes. There was a lot of companies willing to do business with you. So not only the salary, right? but I made a huge amount of money on those endorsements. On the endorsements. Jim did too. They're the ones that pay, though. The client pays. They're the, but that, that's where you make the money. In, am am a I wrong? A lot of money. Yeah, that's where you make the money in radio. Because you know, Lord knows the station ain't paying you shit. <laughs> well, but I was saying in my yeah. case they did. Okay, they, they paid did. me okay. very well. Got well, you. you top, you add on the endorsements, then I got usually got a pretty good bonus. Uh, probably in February. Yeah, is my based on the year before. Sure, I just come off one of the biggest bonuses ever. Right. So You're on top I of hit the, the three things. Yeah, I had the big bonus mm-hmm. on top of the world, and they walk in and let me go. And and. I think one, uh, they, they, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know what the word would be. I'm a free speaker. I, yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I believe that, that I did not advance mm-hmm. in our company up the ladder to other bigger markets, bigger right, positions, right. because I'm not a yes guy. Oh, yeah. I am definitely not a yes guy. Well, you stand your ground. I want it done. Yeah. This this is the way that's going to make money. This is the way that's mm-hmm. going to make ratings. And I stick by it. And uh, uh, that's just – and so I don't think they like that. Right. And I made a lot of money. Uh, and it wasn't just me. I will yeah. say uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, in uh, Tulsa, mm-hmm. uh, another friend of mine who I used to work for, there was about a dozen guys – that day or the next day across America that, that worked just... for the company got the same thing, got the same deal. It was, uh, it was, um, um, you got to remember, uh, they filed bankruptcy several years ago. Right. Radio is, is, it's so different. It's so different. It's, it's so hurting. Different. It, it it's, is. It's been hurting. Jim, it's dying. Don't you agree? It's, it's, it is. It's a dying business. It's not the same as it was 30 years ago, it seven is. years ago. It's just not. It, you it's know, not. you know what the first move was? Newspapers. Mm-hmm. Newspapers, you know, we, I was talking uh, with uh, one of my friends the other night that's in TV, very well-known personality, and mm-hmm. he feels that TV will do the same thing with local news as they're doing with radio, you know, sure. bringing in from out of town it's, within the next four years. I agree. And uh, so anyway, yeah. uh, so, you know, I just think it was a a bunch of things. The one thing that bothers me the most, and I've told people this, I'm getting old. I'll be 69 in January. No way. Yeah. 
And I've been doing this 47 years. That would have been 50, uh, 48 years. I would have been content to walk away, Mm -hmm. retire. Uh, I have another uh, profession that I've been interested in the last eight years. And I decided to, uh, after I got let go, uh, it really pushed me into it. it, Anyway, um, I had a contract that ended in 10 months from that March 15th. Mm -hmm. I could have worked that 10 months. I could have said, they could have come to me and said, Zach, we're going to go a different direction. We're going to do this. I could have went to the advertisers who I appreciated so much, Mm -hmm. said, hey, you guys are the best. This company's great. Stick with them. I could have said goodbye to the listeners. I could have went out in the public and done stuff. Mm -hmm. For 10 months, I said, okay. I I mean, I would have done that. I would have walked away. Give me me 10 months. But they didn't even do that. They fired me Mm -hmm. and paid me for six months. (sighs) So... You know, it just, uh, I, I'm so disappointed that I wasn't able, able to say goodbye mm-hmm. on the radio, say goodbye to my advertisers mm-hmm. uh, that, that were by me for some of them on the air with me over 30 years on right. the radio, you know, CTWP and oh, there's so many of them. But so many, yeah. Anyway, it's just the way it ends. But you know, Zach, I, there, there's just I feel like there's more that we're, we're leaving out. But we're gonna take a quick break, okay? And when we get back, I, I want to know what um, you think the state of radio is in today. Um, if we were all doomed for a long time, and maybe we were turning a blind eye to it, and what you got going on now more, and what you got going on more now. Okay. So make sure you guys stay tuned here with my I very special it. guest, Zach Owen, on the Public Affair. We'll be right back. Jeez. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this exciting episode of The Public Affair. My very special guest, Zach Owen. He's being mouthy behind the scenes, but we're yes. going to get into it now. Before we're talking we get, about eyebrows. We're talking about eyebrows and our girlfriends. Now, before we continue, I definitely <laughs> want to use this opportunity. I'm just going to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this sure. episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by Bandas Hauling Service with Julian and Ana Banda. They rent dump trailers. You fill it up and they're going to haul it away. They also do junk removals. They do tree brush removals. They haul cars in and out of town. They also offer roll off dumpster services as well for when you guys are having those big giant parties. Make sure you give them a call so that way you're not leaving trash all over the floor and if your car breaks down they'll come tow it as well 100% reliable save their number on your phone bandas hauling service book now with the number on the screen thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair of course the chefitos kitchen with al gutierrez and adriana gutierrez serving the best in latin cuisine including some of my favorite dishes i personally as a boricua grew up on i'm talking about arroz con gandules i'm talking about penny i'm talking about plato maduro there's so much more oh get their cuban sandwiches follow on facebook check out their daily lunch specials they are union grove you can order on grubhub doordash and more chefitos kitchen thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Soko Soccer Academy with Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez offering the best in child care, uh, team, small group, and individual skills training, elite skills training to make your kids superb star athletes with professionals like George DeLeon, the best in child care. Make sure you guys hit them up and it keeps your kids active. It keeps them social. It keeps, keeps their head out of the streets and stuff like that. And The Public Affair remains a very proud sponsor of the Soko Soccer teams as well. Coach by Coach Mauro Maldonado, Coach Megan, Coach Jeff Knapp. Thank you guys so much for allowing me the opportunity to do so. And to Soko Soccer Academy, thank you for your support in return. I appreciate you guys so much. And of course, to Boyo Box and Audio with my boy Jeffrey Morreal, home for all your LED needs, auto accessories, installation of stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building custom software enclosures for so much more. If Zach hears the bass in, in the parking lot, that's me yeah. because Boyo Box and Audio did that. All right. They also put the tint in my car. They put the star lights in my car. They put the LED lights in my car. Just hit them up. Quick turnarounds, affordable payments. Jeffrey Monreal, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. All right, guys. We're back with my very special guest. Oh, you forgot season. one spe- uh, sponsor oh, this that? morning. Uh, it was uh, Vivian's Half Price Pantyhose Emporium. Oh, hello. Yeah, her slogan is, uh, come by, my pantyhose are always half off. <laughs> is that a real thing, or are you just are you effing around? <laughs> I don't want Vivian calling me. <laughs> or uh, also, you can be uh, sponsored by Juan's House of Guitars and Banjos. Okay. Juan's slogan is, come by, I've got something for you to pick. There you <laughs> I'll pick whatever Juan has. That's fine. Juan, Juan sounds like he wants me to do that. Uh, yes. hey, let me, let me, you know uh, his last name? Mo Time. Why is that? One more time. One more time. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm here for it, Zach. Okay. okay. I'm, right. I'm really slutty behind the scenes. Anyway, so, <laughs> you know, we did we did that though. Like, you know, like radio was such a fun business to be in because we got behind the scenes and all the stages, all the all the clubs, all the yep. um, the concerts and everything and uh, the shit that went on behind the scenes, you guys. I'll get in trouble. I'm not gonna I can't say it. I can't say it. But anyway, um, you know what? I, I have a question for you before we just jump right into it. You know, okay. there's a big debate on whether or not I got let go or fired from power. And because listen, and part of our contract, I don't know about you, and part of my contract we had to sell advertising, right? And and part of that you didn't get paid if you put your two weeks in. So when I put my yeah, no, so yes. That was in my, I know I had the shittiest contract. When I put my two weeks in, I wasn't gonna get paid any of the commission that I was that I could have potentially sold in those two weeks. And so they let me go the next day. They but I was I was quitting. Is that fired or is that or did they let me go? Or or did I quit? I think it was a mutual agreement. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we did have I a big, know. we had a big falling out. We did yeah. have a big falling out the yeah. day before, me and the program director and the, the so-called manager and whatever the other guy is. And so we did have a big falling out the day before, but I had already put my two weeks in at that point. Well, you know? I, <laughs> yeah, I will tell you, uh, and even today, there are so many people that work in radio mm -hmm. uh, full time that it's sad uh, the amount of money uh, that they're paid. I remember... <laughs> God, don't get me started. When I started in radio. Uh, I wasn't making shit, dude. My first radio job, like I said, mm -hmm. 1977, full-time, I made $600 a month. I remember that. Wow. And um, back then, and probably still today, a lot of general managers, uh, program directors, they'll go and hire you and they'll say, well, we're going to pay you uh 1500 a month is your salary. And you'll go, oh, I don't know. I'll go, well, wait a minute, though. You're going to do a bunch of remote broadcasts. Yeah. You're going to make all this money. So what they're saying to you is you're going to work your ass off mm -hmm. full time, mm -hmm. and we're going to throw some money at you on the yeah. side That's for you is. to work more hours. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Chrissy put me on game real early. I will tell you that. She's like, if you have a remote, no matter how many, you better like – coordinate that with the time that you're working here during the week. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. work more than what you have to yeah. type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, my contract as far as the pay, I don't want to get too into it, but it was, I seen your face when I was talking about it. It was kind of shitty. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely, they, he got a good one on me there. Let me ask you this. Um, do you, I'm just going to give some context here. When I started on the, sh on the show, um, I've been off of radio, what, almost two years now. And so seven years prior when I got on as an intern, Zach, I feel like it was still about the personality. I feel like it was still about, oh, I'm, I'm listening to Chrissy or Zach and Jim or even Andrew G for that matter at night and we're winning prizes and I, I can't wait to go see them at this event and blah, blah, blah. Right. As the time progressed, I noticed that it was less about that and more about, okay, but what endorsements are you bringing in or what, what advertising are you selling? Do you think us as personalities were doomed Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been that way. It's been happening the last 20 plus years. Mm. Like I said, it's slowly, you know, I had to, to let Chrissy go. It's a right. financial thing. You know, when you get these big companies, number one, these big companies bought these radio stations, started sucking them up back in the, probably I'm going to go with late 80s, right. maybe mid 80s. They started buying up these mom and pop. Sure. You know, they bought up this one and that one and that one and this one. You got, you've got uh, iHeart. You've got Town Square. You've got Cumulus. Uh, you know, got four or five, uh, Odyssey, that are big companies. And they just bought up thousands of radio. Yeah. Well, they paid too much. Mm. They paid too much money. Right. Thus, a lot of the companies have filed bankruptcy. Uh, they've had to reorganize. They've had. That's why they're letting people go. It's a, yeah. it's, it's it's a combination of, uh, hey, we've got to uh, uh, make money. We've got to pay the bills, which right. I understand that. But and, but the sad thing is, they let people go and take those salaries to do that. Right. The other thing is technology. Yeah. Uh, you can't uh, talk about. Hey, it's it's technology. You know, uh, <laughs> they're able to have a show now that's in Nashville yeah. and do the show here. It's live. But I'm going to get back to what I believe mm -hmm. when radio started by Marconi. And I'm, I'm going to always remember uh, Marconi's name because back in 19, I want to say probably um, 89, right. I won – the Marconi Award, it's a national award for the top DJ 
small market mm -hmm. in America. I was in, in Abilene at the time, yeah. and I won that award. So I always remember the name Marconi. Yeah. But Marconi and the our forefathers of radio, radio was intended to be local, mm. to be local, just like mm. newspaper, okay, just like television. Yeah. It was meant to be local. It's what they're doing is what satellite is, right. satellite radio. It's one studio, and it's sent out all over America. Right. That's what they want. They want one studio, mm -hmm. send it out all over. Radio was not meant to be that way. Sure. It was meant, when I, was, uh, when I went to school and when I got started, uh, a, a wise old man told me, Zach, everybody gets the same records. Mm-hmm. It's what you put around it yeah, I agree. that okay. makes the difference. Sure. And that around mm. it is local personality. Yeah. Okay. Local personality. But it became less about that as time went on. It's become less about that. It, it was no longer like who cares about Zach no. and Jim? Who cares about Christy yeah. and the one who cares about Andrew G at night? Like, okay, but well, what, what are you bringing me? How much, yeah. did, how much did you make from fucking Starbucks? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's things like that. It's sad that it, it, it died down to that. It is. It's, Do you it's think that the sad. community was aware of that? Because here's the thing. It's a double question for you, Zach. When you, when you got let go and you announced it, I mean, there was an overwhelming support for it, it you. It really touched me. Yes, yes it did. That probably Very had much. Waco 100, like, shook. Do you think? Um, I know for a fact they lost a lot of advertising. And, okay. you know, when it comes down to it, 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 it even above ratings, uh, because not everybody's number one. Yeah. You know, we've got, I don't know, what do we got? 11 stations, 12 stations in Waco. Are they there still? You know? You know, Power 108 turned into country, so my expiration date was, <laughs> it was just, it was inevitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I, I, I'm saying that you yeah. all can't be number one, you all no, can't be number absolutely two. absolutely not. But the thing and, is, and, at the end of the day, you made an effort to make sure that that station was standing tall, number yes, one, and yes. they dropped you like a hat. Yes. Were you undervalued? Were um, you underappreciated? I think by certain people. Okay. Um, I, I don't want to come across as being very um, mad or upset with uh, iHeart. In the old days, it was called Clear Channel, yeah. same company. Um, because I had uh, great years, great years with this company. Oh, yeah, for sure. Great. I made a lot of money. Great people I've met. I've got to do things, um, which I, I hope you'll let me tell you some of the crazy things that, that Jim and I or I got to do over my career mm -hmm. Besides outside of that, we're related to radio, but outside. Sure. But what what I was getting at is that it's been a good ride. It's right. been a great ride, except for a handful of people over the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh, that um, I just I think it was wrong. I think it was wrong. Like I said, mm -hmm. they could have given me, uh, you know, ha gave me the last 10 months. An opportunity me walk to away and bow smile. gracefully. And it was just one Friday afternoon, yeah. you're done. Yeah. Everybody get used to it. Oh, well. That's the that's what's so cutthroat and shitty about that business, you guys. You guys don't understand. Like, I mean, we understand because we were in it. You know what I mean? You especially. This person, it didn't matter that Zach was making all this money, making all this great business relationships and bringing in all these endorsements for, for Waco 100 to, you know, stand tall. Somebody just came in basically and said, okay, thanks, but sucks to suck. Yeah. I'm taking over. Yeah. I'm taking credit for your work. Yep. How yep. did you not become bitter? Um, you just got to move on. You, you yeah. just got to move on. And, 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 you know, about eight years ago, uh, I thought about my future. I thought yeah. about... Um, and then when, when Jim got sick, it, it thought about it. And, and when, when those ratings came back after Jim had passed away and mm -hmm. I, and it had done well, I kind of had a re had a rebirth. And I thought, you know what? I could maybe go two or three more years. I really yeah. thought that, but I had a 10 month contract. Mm. Now, I'll tell you, I changed, not change it, but kind of talk about something you brought up earlier. Right. You were talking about, did you see it coming? Mm -hmm. um, probably two months or so before, maybe three months before they let me go. Right. The guy that was uh, my boss out of Beaumont, um, I had presented to him. I said, hey, 
I think I can do this a little longer. Yeah. How about let's do a three-year deal? Okay. In the past, in the past 30 years, I would ask for something, and that damn contract would be on my desk. <laughs> same day. Same day. Yeah. Signed, same day. Say less. And I was told, we got other things that we're working on. Mm. You know, kind of let's wait on it. Okay. That tipped me to that, that was like something flag for you was not mm. right gotcha that was one thing now the guy that 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 was my boss that was one that let me go i love him he's a good guy mm -hmm. uh in fact the sad part is about a month after i got let go they let him go oh wow and i sent him a a, a text or email and i said uh man i am so sorry sure uh, that this happened to you because he was a good guy and yeah. spent many years in radio like me. Most definitely. Um, but anyway, um, I, I had an idea it was coming. Okay. I, I just kind of, in fact, I had even uh, proposed that they bring Jennifer Allen, who had worked for me many times yeah. on and off. I think I know Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, yeah. uh, uh, great on air talent. Yeah. Uh, I had proposed to bring her back as my partner, my new partner. Oh, okay. It was going to be Zach and Jennifer in the morning. Yeah. And Jennifer was all in, and so they were working on that. Well, it turns out that after they they put it off and they put it off, after they fired me, they reached out to Jennifer and said, do you want to – we want you to come back now and you run things. Oh. Take over for Zach. And Jennifer Allen, my friend, uh -huh. worked for me, love her said no i don't want the job good for her and she's she solid. has moved to uh back to her family uh, yeah. she's from kentucky she okay. lives in kentucky her son's going to college there and uh, uh she is now working i believe for a radio station in bowling green have i worked with jennifer does you she work probably have does she work at prophecy she might have been over there short, a bit. short blonde, blonde hair yeah i love jennifer, jennifer I, I, with, I love jennifer yes Christy's going to be mad yeah. that I didn't remember that. But, yes, we, we, we did do some work together. She was always kind with me. Very she kind. She was always very kind with me. Yes, she yep. was. Yeah. Very, but and, and good for her, too, because she, she stood could, up. She, she, could, she stood in the paint. She could yep. have been like, no, well, I'm going to be the new Zach. And she, it sounds like her loyalty yep. really played a part in that decision. That's and right. That doesn't exist in that, in that me, business. Uh, so uh, <laughs> just really touched me. When That's she, so great. When she said, turn them down. Kudos to her. Kudos yeah. to her. What's What's – Surely you don't have any regrets. You mentioned earlier that there were some fun times that you and Zach had, <laughs> or you and Jim had, excuse me. What, yeah. What's a time that you can recall? That uh, well, over the years, yeah. going back my whole career, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've been on an elephant. I've ridden uh, this, that, and the other. I wrestled a bear in Abilene in a bar one time, a black bear. I wrestled it. That's hot, Zach. It, it, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> it, it was hot. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it laid on me and, and I didn't even, I'm mean, I just trying to get out from under this bear. Sure. And I was sweating and just crazy. Okay. But anyway, uh, I've uh, got into a pit of rattlesnakes out in Sweetwater and right, milked right. rattlesnakes <laughs> and so forth and so on. Uh, I've, uh, you know, been on billboards and spent the night to raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim and I rode uh, many years ago. We were told it was the 100th anniversary of the Ferris wheel. Oh, wow. And it just happened to be fair time in Waco. Yeah. And they were bringing a new Ferris wheel, a mm -hmm. bucket. And we said, let's do Waco 100, ride the Ferris wheel for 100 hours straight no. for the 100th anniversary. Yeah. We raised money for a local organization called Community Cancer. Uh-huh. And uh, we had people get on and for we sold T-shirts. And they would ride and yeah. do all this. And we slept and, and lived on that Ferris wheel for 100 hours. Where would you go to the bathroom? They had a supported john that was ours. <laughs> and so when it would stop to get people on, we'd yeah. run out. Run uh, okay, on. so you were able okay. yeah, we were, <laughs> yeah, we were able to go Okay, to I'm thinking 100 straight. I was like, what are you, Jack? Zach, there's yeah. not a lot that I yeah. can't not stand for I mean, 100 there, hours straight. Okay. There are diapers, but none that big. Yeah, so, no, okay. You know? <laughs> You're going to have to get me something. Goodness gracious. Listen, you. So that was that yeah, was incredible that time. That sounds like it was fun, actually. Uh, yeah. One time uh, at uh, Alan Samuels Chevrolet back on Valley Mills Drive, uh -huh. Jim Cody was frozen for 48 hours in a truck, a block of ice in a truck. 
and people would walk by and view him. Wow. And he was in a block of ice for 48 hours to raise money mm -hmm. for, I think, MAD, Mothers Against oh, Drunk Drivers. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that. We've done a lot of crazy stuff. But one of our, I would say, something that meant, the, of course, Cattle Barons was big, all the organizations. Uh, we've had the Zach and Jim Golf Tournament uh, coming up. May of next year will be our 32nd. We're going to continue it as the Zach and Jim Golf Tournament oh, awesome. at Cottonwood Creek. All yeah. the money we raise goes to the Chris Kyle American Valor Foundation. Yeah. And Chris Kyle's family gives that money to active and uh, retired military first responders. It's a great organization. That's so awesome. Yeah. So we're, you know, we love that. Uh, but the other thing is our close ties with the military. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you just as quick as possible. Back in 2007, uh, we, it was in the, during the war and the Gulf War. Um, actually, it was when they invaded, I think, um, maybe it was the Gulf. Anyway, uh, I can't remember which portion. If it was the portion where they invaded uh, uh, Kuwait or what. It was 2007. We were emceeing a charity, a, a holiday charity event in Colleen, mm -hmm. a, a beautiful lady, uh, dressed really nice, came up to me and Jim, very tall, and she said, hey, I'm a big fan. I listen to you all the time. I've heard you on the radio say, golly, man, we'd love to go over and support our troops like yeah. the singer. She said, are you serious? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, we said yes. Sure. Not thinking. Within a few months, 2008, we were on our way to Iraq. Oh, Wow. And oh, I, wow. at that time, I mean, it was still a combat zone and, yeah. and we had to get all the shots. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we laughed because we said we'll be the only ones in the Waco area that won't get anthrax because we had to get <laughs> anthrax shots. But anyway, <laughs> we went over and we spent a couple of weeks yeah. with 4ID uh, broadcasting. Also, I was told, I don't know if it's 100% true. I never looked it up. Right. They said that in 2008, when we were there in the combat zone, no other music formatted show. There had been news people there mm -hmm. and news talk people, mm -hmm. but never DJs from music. We were the first in a combat zone in history. Wow. To do our show. Congrats. And uh, so we did that in uh, 2008. In 2009, we got asked to go back with uh, uh, CAV, first CAV. Yeah, yeah. We went back in 2009 to CAV. Uh, with Cav, and then a few years later, I got a call, and we were invited to go to Afghanistan. Yeah, we went to Afghanistan. A couple of years later, they asked us back to Afghanistan. We did our show over there. Uh, then a few years passed, we got asked to go to uh, Republic of South Korea. Uh -huh. Went to Korea, did our show over there. So we have always supported our military, uh, especially the army. You know, yes. being from Fort Cavazos. And uh, that I think that's one of our favorite things. We were then asked to become what they call good neighbors. Yes. And Jim and I are uh, good neighbors for Fort Cavazos, have our picture up in the lobby of wow, the headquarters. Fantastic. And, and so we kind of uh, promote, and that's yeah. why I really wanted to talk about it, promote uh, the community's involvement. And uh, we have a great community that helps out Fort Cavazos, mm -hmm. uh, one of the largest um, active military uh, posts. Uh, in the world. Wow. But uh, anyway, that was one of the things that we were very proud of sure. is our commitment to help the uh, military. So many, so many, yeah. And, uh, you know, and now that's all awesome. gone. You won't hear that on the radio. <laughs> yeah. And it's sad to say, but you know, those things will live on for a lifetime and everybody will remember that. Um, you know, you also just put on social media that um, you were offered quite a number of offers to be back on radio. Maybe not at Waco. Well, how, let me ask you this. Did Waco 100 ever reach back out after? No. After, so the, no. I, I, yeah. I, I can't tell you this. Okay. My friend who I hired many years ago, Dwayne, uh, uh, um, uh, almost said a, a different yeah. name because, and, and I'll tell you real quick that story. But, yeah. Uh, uh, Dwayne Wells, uh, who is on um, Big 95, the yeah. morning show, KBGO, been there a long time. Uh, they actually let him go oh, wow. uh, a few months ago. Uh, I was told, I don't even know if I should say this because I don't know it 100%, uh -huh. but I was told that, allegedly, 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 allegedly yes. uh, that between uh, our morning show and his morning show, we were the only two local live morning shows in the building. Right. Between those two shows, they lost so many advertisers that they had to bring him back. Mm. 
they didn't. They're not going to bring me back. Okay. They're not going to bring me back. <laughs> and 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 so they brought Dwayne back. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm proud because you know that's his life, just like it was my sure, life. Sure, sure. And he's back at uh, at the radio station, mm-hmm. and and I'm I'm so happy for him because he's a great guy, right, and a great right. on air talent, and I'm I'm proud of him. I'm proud of uh, him. Uh, our, our our working together all those years. But yeah. That. Uh, uh, but no, they'll, they would never, never, ever ask me back. And my, would, you, would you go back if they asked? That's uh, what I was going to say. Somebody <laughs> asked me that. Yeah. And, and I, I wouldn't. I, you would I, not. Okay. I would not go back uh, for the same amount of money, double the money, triple the money. Uh, you know, you have you have uh, principles and you stand up for those. And, and I, I just would not do that. Uh, I, w- I have been contacted by um, three different companies. Right. Uh, between Waco and Colleen Temple, mm-hmm. and I have uh, passed on all three offers um, because I really want to concentrate on my new career. Sure, and that's real real estate. Real estate, okay. So I am uh, selling residential real estate. I've been with Weikert, the Eastland Group, uh, since July, mid July. Yeah. So three months. And uh, I, you know, I thought long and hard. I miss radio. Yeah, Don't sure. get me wrong. Well, that's all you've known for over 30, 50 years. Yeah, almost. Yeah. And like I said, since I was a little kid, that's the one job. That's I what you wanted. wanted to do. Yeah. I miss it so bad. But this is a new chapter in my Just life, a new era. Uh-huh. and I want to concentrate fully on that. Sure. Nothing against the companies I turned down. You know, right. uh, I just want to concentrate Here's on this. Yeah. You know what, Zach? I, and I hate that. And playing crappy golf. There you go. <laughs> I want to take me with you to play crappy golf sometime. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're running out of time, and I hate that because I feel like I could sit here with you for five hours and, and just get dive into deep. I want to give you an opportunity to do something that you didn't get to do okay. before you were let go. Um, you didn't get an opportunity to thank your listeners, to thank your advertisers, to to have that 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 final bow. Can you do that for us here? I would love to. I would love to say thank you to those uh, advertisers that were with us for many, many years. Uh, some brand new, but most many years. Thank you so much. And uh, I know there's over 20 of them that were regular, uh, what we called endorsers, mm-hmm. uh, endorsements, live endorsements. Uh, the new word is what's the new word uh, that uh, they use in the world instead of endorsements? It's not sponsors. You're uh, you're uh, uh, online on on. Uh, you talk about – see, I'm going to be uh, – maybe they'll edit <laughs> trying, this out. No, no, I'm not you're having a, a brain fart. You're a um, – We're not sponsors, no, not advertisers. what do you call it? When you um, – you're on YouTube and when you do podcasts and when you do, you endorse things, but it's got a name. Anyway. Sponsor – advertising no, sponsorship. No, they call it something else. There's, no, a, okay. there's a new name, new hip name. Okay. I, I call my advertisers my sponsors because yeah. they sponsor the public affair. Yeah. So right. I don't, I'm maybe we're thinking of different things. But uh, anyway. Anyway, okay. So, Yeah. Thanks to the uh, the advertisers, appreciate it. All the listeners um, from Fort Worth to Dallas, uh, people that listen online from all over. I have a, a loyal listener uh, over in Australia oh, that wow. has listened for years and years. People all over, uh, thank you. Um, all of our travel goers, we're continuing the Zach and Jim Travel Club. Uh, in fact, coming up in a week, we're going to announce trip number 45 Yeesh. of the Travel Club. We just got back. We took 60 people to Switzerland, Austria, Germany for Oktoberfest. Oh, nice. And so our next trip will be next year, but we'll announce that next week. But we're going to continue that. But thanks to all our Travel Club members. Thank you to uh, the military, mm-hmm. um, people I worked with, uh, my friends that were uh, – supportive of me and Jim um I just just thank you so very much it it's um it's humbling when you read those comments yeah. uh that came across on uh, social media mm-hmm. um it it's it had just, to have been overwhelming uh, for you but it, it's also so heartwarming I, my heart was warm for you to see how much support and, and people that backed you and you really have touched a lot of lives a lot of organizations it was more than just the business Zach, you know that. It was more than just that. It, it, you were a part of so many people's lives for so many years. You're going to make me cry. No, I'm sorry. I, but we have, to, we have to call it for what it is. Everybody loved you. You know what I mean? Everybody still loves you, and we're all rooting for you. And, you know, you've had such a, an extensive and accomplished career, and no matter what happens in your life, you can, you can count on that you, you, you place the stamp on people's hearts. Yeah. 
True. Well, I thank you. I appreciate yes. that. And that's, I think that's why I said, you know, I, uh, the 47 year career, um, I don't have any regrets. It's, right. it's been a great ride. And I want to say thank you. And I just thought of the word influencer. Influencer. Hello. <laughs> they call them influence. Yes. Now. That's what they are. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much uh, mm. for letting me come on. Uh, this is the uh, first podcast. The oh. last podcast that I did, Jim uh-huh. and I had a podcast. And it was the podcast that Jim told everybody he had cancer. Mm. And that's been... Probably a, a, a year and a half ago wow. was the last podcast I was on. And so uh, I appreciate you having me on. Oh, my God. The and, honor is uh, mine, Zach. Thank you. Thank I'm going to so get much. online. I'm going to yeah. tell everybody to listen and uh, become a regular uh, listener, viewer of your your show. Thank you. That means a lot, Zach. Thank you. And honestly, the honor is mine for you to have taken the time to come off. We've only met once for five seconds, many years, many the, years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Um, I, I did not think that our paths would cross again. And for us to be here now and you be on the public affair means the world to me. So thank you for your time as a, as a, person who's a veteran in the business that I came up in. I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. Anything that you need, I want you to know that you can reach out to me as well. Um, and and I'm just so grateful that you told some of your story on this show. And I want to tell you that I wish you nothing but the best in all your future endeavors and everything that you Thank have you. going on. I wish you the very best. And Thank you. have me back and I'll tell you some stories about oh, yeah. country stars that I've had dealings with. We're gonna, okay, do who's that. Who's the best and who's the worst. And who you can hook me up with, please. Absolutely. I need a country star to take me cross country and Okay. And, okay. I, can, I, I can, can make lunch, that. Zach. I got this. I okay. can I can cook and shit. You know what I mean? Hmm. There we go. Something different, right? <laughs> yeah. Zach, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I truly appreciate it. To all of you guys that tuned into this episode, thank you guys again so much. Zach, you're the greatest. Thank you're you. you're a legend. We love you. you. I appreciate you so much. Now, before we go, I just gotta give a shout. Just a few more. Just a few more of our sponsors sure. of this episode of the Public you Affair. Got to. Of course, the Elite Barbershop and my boy Sid Rodriguez, who's got me looking all snackish for Zach on this episode of the Public Affair. Like it. On, isn't it great? It is. It's great. I have another appointment tomorrow i gotta get every week zach all right <laughs> he's located on hewitt drive you can call the number on the screen to book or download the squire app walkins are welcome as well he has marcus are you Guerrero. getting ext- extensions i'm no. not getting extensions okay. but sometimes we do the 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 paint edge up like oh, the spray paint the edge up. i love it it's not t- <laughs> i'm gonna get bangs for you that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell it i want to burn i'm gonna get bangs just for you and i'm gonna okay. pull up to your next travel event we all got right. marcus Guerrero, chris reyes santos Cordova, david rodriguez isaac chavez clint fletcher isai reyes sam sabios and kayla chapa or the you like a snack i have for more than 220 episodes of The Public Affair to Elite Barbershop. Great. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Ana Limones with Hummingbird Party Backdrops and Decor. Listen, if you guys are having a party, if you guys are having a wedding event, if you guys are having a quinceanera, anything, call her for all your party decorations. She's going to give you beautiful bloom props and custom wooden backdrops as well. That girl mm. does the best. She's amazing. Wow. She's so amazing. She puts all her blood, sweat, and tears into every single thing. She's a one-man army. Her, her husband custom makes the wooden backdrops however you want them. She's the GOAT. Make sure you guys follow Hummingbird Party Backdrops and the core. Anna Limones, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, to my boy, Julio Arriaga with JC Painting and Drywall LLC. Contact for all drywall and beautiful new paint for your property, both commercial and residential. His work is honest and true and can guarantee 100% satisfaction. He truly lives by his slogan. Just imagine and we can make it happen. Call today and get scheduled. Say habla español. My boy, Julio Arriaga, mucho gracias por todo. Thank you so much for all your support for me and the Soka Soccer team. Of course, to all of you guys, thank you again so much. I've got more of The Public Affair on the way to be in the presence of this living legend as I'm shook. I'm shook it. <laughs> and Zach, I hope, I hope we could see more of each other. In the Absolutely. Yes, I, I would be honored to have you uh, ask me back on the show sometime 100%. down the road. We're, we're going to do it, you guys. Make sure you stay tuned for part two. But until then, don't forget to always keep it between us. <laughs> That's it. Beesh. Way to go. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.